Echo, we're up. And yep, you're live. All right. Hello. Um, this is a session of the Follow Leader and Room Where It Happened joint charity live stream supporting the charity Mermaids. Hey, this should fix the audio. I and I forgot I need to be in the room because I need Thank to be you. able to hear you. Yeah, sorry about that. Sorry about that, everybody. All right. Good. Our, our <laughs> first, our first big charity live stream where people need to sleep in between and stuff. It's good. It's good. All right. Where was I? That's Brian. He's still here and he's great. Um, um you want to just start over? You probably need to start over because I missed all of it. Okay, then I will start over. Hello and welcome. This is the Follow the Leader and Room Where It Happened 24-hour joint charity live stream, session six. We're here supporting the charity Mermaids UK. I'm Jade and I'm your host for this session and my pronouns are they, them. And playing with me this session, I have. Oh, it's me. It's Gales. I just woke up. <laughs> <laughs> That's all you need to know. Um, for this session, we are playing Random Access Histories by Ben Roswell. For those of you who are new to this game, here are the basics. Random Access Histories is a game about the stories we can carry with us in our bodies at, and how we share them with each other. The object of the game is not to succeed or fail at any one action, but rather to build and explore a changing relationship between two entangled people. It's a game about partnership and understanding. Our lines, which are things we absolutely do not want to see, are homophobia and transphobia, racism, sexism, violence against children and animals, sexual assault, domestic violence or intimate partner violence, and unwanted pregnancy. Our veils, which are things we're fine with addressing but will just fade to black on, are steamy situations, graphic descriptions of bodily harm, and terminal illness. So now that we've got all that, well, let's get started. And I just realized that I got so caught up with starting, I did not retweet the tweet I needed to tweet. Um, <laughs> I'm very good at this. <laughs> Did you know? You're doing great. As are you. You are a trooper for getting up. I have done the backup to do streaming or games after three hours. And yeah, I, I know this. The only real problem is that I didn't open the door to my room before I like, mm. went to sleep intentionally. Mm. And, mm -hmm. um, and now it's really cold. Oh, friend. Oh, friend. Um, well, we'll try to get into the game, and our, our emotions will keep you warm. Um, Is that how it works? I'm, I'm, I I'm saying it. Blanket. Blankets are good, too. Get a blanket. Um, so, Random Access History, a game of oh, interleave God. memory. Um, I'm going to read this little bit of flavor text before we dive in. Um, there is a term called pixel bloom that refers to the light from a single pixel spilling outward, blaring into and illuminating its neighbors. When scientists were asked to name the manner of information sharing between an entangled mech and pilot, they remembered the seeping glow of figures on an otherwise dark cathode ray screen. When the bloom occurs, memories, thoughts, emotions, and sensations may bleed from pilot to mech and back again. That's it. We're playing mechs. We're playing with mechs and pies again. It's probably, for those of you that were awake, it's probably going to have a very different feeling to Beam Saber. Um, oh, yeah. Which was a, a riot. I caught like the back half of it and um, laughed so much I nearly felt sick. So it's good. It's very good. Um, this game refers to both pilots, uh, both players as co pilots. Uh, one of us will be playing a mech, the other the pilot. We are not simply a machine and its operator. We both have equal agency over where the story goes. Um, the mech, uh, the term mech is a uh, shorthand for a large category of characters. It can be the traditional large robot along the lines of Dundam suits, but it can also mean anything you and your co pilot consider to be a mech. 
the only requirement is that the mech needs a pilot. This game is built to deliberately encourage you to explore the weirder and stranger definitions of the word. Um, so it says to quickly go through the list below on, on um, content, aim, tone, and subject matter. Uh, Kales and I have a long history of playing together, so we have a lot of the same touch points, but just if we want to go over those, see what we're in the right headspace to do today, and then we can get into the setup for the game proper. Uh, that sounds good. Um, I want to, I, I, I'm kind of happy to go wherever you want in terms of like, I don't want to say content necessarily, but, um, mm -hmm. that's kind of what I mean. I mean, what I mean is like, the first thing that we talk about in setup is the war and I am kind of happy to go in whichever sort of direction you want to go with for mm -hmm. um, discussing that since we know what we're planning to play yeah okay um well the things we're going to discuss are, are content aim so what content is just a, uh, it's sort of like the pitch for the game um what we want to get out of the story our tone um subject matter we've already addressed with our lines and veils so mm. that's that's good um i don't want to necessarily go too super grim dark with this um i don't think it fits the characters that we've talked about no but i don't think it's going to be um goofy and slapstick with recorder covers if my heart will go on either <laughs> when the archive goes live you guys really need to check out the beam saver game it slapped so good it, oh, it, it, it so puts good. the slap in slapstick it's it's great um, oh, we did really really good i'm really pleased with how it was it, a, it was a good game kales did a great job running it and the players were a riot um hmm are we looking for a story which could end hopefully rather than it being a crash and burnout tragedy? I would like, like it to personally. Right. Uh -huh. Just because of my own feelings about the character. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so I would really that like it to me. end nice. Yeah, I mean, uh, all folks, uh, I'm going to hopefully be running a beam saver campaign later this year, of which Chaos has expressed an interest in playing this character. So, you know, <laughs> it's not canon, but it could be <laughs> kind of a vibe. Hopefully, hopefully I'm able to play that, uh, play that campaign. We will find out. We will find out. Um, all right. So I feel this is like a point of view character. This is like, uh, it's me, this is like a, a small perspective on a bigger, bigger picture on a bigger stage. This is like, a, I don't know. I don't like war movies, especially. So, uh, but like one of those stories that focuses on the individuals, this isn't about the grand sweep, sweeping war effort. This is like a pair of co-pilots and their story. It's sort of like them working together to whatever mm -hmm. goals they might be. So that kind of, I like the thought of it feeling like a small story happening on a very big stage. Yes. And like a spotlight has been put on a part of the stage as it were. Yeah. I do also kind of like the idea of it being very, um, with it being that spotlight, of it being very, very focused on the two of them. That's partially because I don't have the brains to do more than just the our two characters. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's, um, I dig that minimal NPCs, minimal wider world stuff, mm -hmm. it, that, yeah. that tight focus. I'm down. I'm good. All right. Um, so set up the war as a team, um, you play your side's best hope in a conflict against an overwhelming enemy. It drew the two of you together and continues to bind you as you go forward together. We'll choose, excuse me, three adjectives from the list below to describe the threat we fear. Uh, we choose one thing or one of those adjectives that sets the threat apart and makes facing it overwhelming. Um, um, I don't think it's in there, but it'll say later that we'll give a name to um to what this uh, enemy is, like the what we call it. So mm -hmm. all right. Um go along with are any of these particularly making you go, ooh, Kales. 
Hmm. Uh, for our for our listeners, um, we've got mutated, self healing, legendary, telepathic, invisible, vicious, imperial, unknowing, compelling, alien, mechanized, expanding, unwavering, small, unpredictable, hive minded, swarming, colossal, human, poisonous, or angelic. Um, really quick, are you using the, the version 2.3 rules? Oh, I have version 2.2. God damn. Uh, no, uh, I mean, I can go use that one instead. I'm just wondering. I, I did not have 2.3. My apologies. Okay. I'm using Dora's um, thing because I guess I don't have this game. Ah, later. I just don't think I updated it because I've had um, this on here for a while, so I didn't know that there had been an update. Sorry, Ben. I will quickly grab the uh, point three as okay. well. So um, the 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 list is the same for the war. I'm just not sure about the rest of it. Um, okay. Um, Legendary still really jumps out to me here. All right, I like that. Let me go over to. Uh, the, I don't know the... what that means. Yeah, uh, we can we can figure that out. I did set up a G doc, so we've got a place to keep tabs on this chaos. Oh. It's pinned in the channel. Coming back. You have so many tabs open. God, same. I have like so many PDFs and all of that. Oh, hey, uh, donation incentives. Yes. Um, at the moment we have the rolling forward uh, for £20. Um, Brian will compose you a song of your choosing. Uh, we can liaise, but you'll just need to, once you've made your donation, uh, DM Brian on Twitter at RoomWebPod. And um, he will create something beautiful for you. If you are here for the intermission, you might have heard some music. If you've listened to uh room where it happened at all or um there are a couple of our guest themes and incidental music on for leader that brian has done for us it's all very good um we have no other i don't think we have any other set incentives right now um but please if you could keep donating that would be so amazing mermaids is a phenomenal charity doing really good work here in the uk uh, supporting the families um, and uh, young people and children who are trans or gender non-conforming. Uh, there's a lot of hostility towards trans folk in the UK right now. Um, mermaids have been the subject of a lot of unfair press, but um, they're doing the good work and we wanted to support them. So, And if you uh, obviously do not donate, we will give you a shout out um, and say all of the thanks. Random Access History 3. Hello. I could offer to do an accent like Riley did, um, but I feel that that might affect the tone. Also, I'm playing a mech that doesn't speak. So it would just be me, Jade, out of character, doing voices and then trying not to ruin the tone. <laughs> <laughs> so maybe I shouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> all right. Rolling through. Come on, G Dogs. All right, there we go. Got the full list. So, Legendary is good. I like that. Um, like something old that maybe awoken again that mm. uh, we're fighting. Um, hmm. I mean, to that instance, do we want to really lean in and use Angelic? Mm. That's good. Or unknowable, one of those two. We get three. I know, but we do we want there's some fun other ones in there too. There's cursed too. There's there's a lot of good adjectives here. There's a lot of good adjectives here. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like Angelic. All right. How about um, with that, um, either compelling or telepathic, or maybe unwavering, one of those three, like this relentless force? 
Um, I am going to shy away from telepathic just a little bit. Um, Absolutely. But compelling is good. All right. So legendary, angelic, and compelling. Which of these do we want to highlight as our uh, our key adjective? Uh, I kind of want to highlight compelling. All right. Cool. So what do we call them? Oh, you're going to ask me to name things at five o'clock in the morning? Come on now. It's 18 minutes past five. Um, okay. Okay. Semantics. Do we want to call them the host? Like the heavenly host kind of vibe, but with that compelling thing, like that command, kind of commanding presence. I'm happy to like do that, oh, well, but I can appreciate that that might be not a great thing either. So, oh, no, that's really good. Okay. Or oh, it was the heralds, but host is cool. All right, the host. Okay, 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 okay. Next up, yes, where to go? The mech, which is me. I'm playing the mech today. Um, I get to choose three adjectives to describe the mech, and then I will choose one of the three as the thing that sets me apart. Other mechs, robots, or people in the world may share the first two ad uh, two of the attributes, but the one you starred is what makes you the best hope to win the war. I know what I want to make. Oh, is it still there? Did it get taken out in version three? Oh, no. It isn't in version three. Damn. I'll have to think of something else. <laughs> I mean, you could always just take it still. I could. I could. The one I wanted to turn on a check that I haven't just imagined that, and it is in fact in. Um, oh, it's because I'm looking at 2.2 still. Let me look at three and see if it's there. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Very sorry, lots to scroll through. Okay, it isn't there, but is it here? Because I don't want to accidentally use the word that is not on the list. Like we play Calvin Ball a lot, but also I like to people know. Okay, why did I think that was a word that was on these lists? Because it is not there now. Damn. Was it on the pilot list? No, it wasn't. Because it wouldn't make sense for it. To... And now I'm going to scroll because I'm like, but was it? Welcome was to uh, Awakened. Oh. Oh, Awoken is under pilot. Ah, well, there we go. What? That's weird. That's wild. Mm-hmm. I like I like that that's under the options for pilot. Let me be clear. Um, hmm. Ooh. Um. I want to use patchwork and make that the starred thing, not in the physical sense, um, but because of something that Chaos and I talked about um, with how this mech thinks and how it draws information and puts experiences together. Mm -hmm. like it's it's way of thinking and it's personality is very patchwork um and it's colorful and it contains multitudes and things maybe that shouldn't work with each other do um that was cool to me if you if you're if you if you're down with that hell yeah hell yeah all right all right all right, all right. patchwork okay two more adjectives i guess i should think about what this mech looks like um, and at least pick one adjective to do with appearance. Um, we've got words we could use otherworldly, shifting, massive, sleek. Um, there's also resonating, organic, anomalous, new, voiced, ancient, secret, mysterious, holy, which would have been interesting given what we chose for our uh, war, uh, storied, skin tight, patchwork, which we're using, mystical, learning, grown, animalistic, and fiery. Hmm. <laughs> not to suggest a for you but learning Please. is very good yeah I like learning too and maybe patchwork does apply a little bit to the uh, thing uh, we talked about a little bit like maybe if the pilot has had this mech a while like there's lots of elements from other kind of models this is definitely uh, somebody like <laughs> has voided their warranty by doing their own upgrades <laughs> kind of Somebody. a vibe 
I didn't want to name them yet, is all. <laughs> it's not my prerogative. Um, hmm. I'm going to take shifting. Mm -hmm. Because th there's room in there for things to happen. And I like that it fits with learning and with patchwork. So... Okay, and once I am done, name myself freely and introduce myself to my co-pilot. Now here's interesting because Chaos has had uh, this pilot character for a while. Have have they ever named their mech? Has their mech ever had a name in your mind? Because mm. I'm happy to use that. I mean, besides the one that has been given, no. All right, I can't remember what you gave it as. I'm gonna have to remember. Oh, oh, wait, hold on. Let me DM you really quick. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Because I mean, like beyond this, um, uh, all right, all right, all right. no, there is no other name. Okay, um, I like that being their name. I'm happy to to declare this here to Twitch and Sundry. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, so uh, this mech's name, um, use uh, they, them pronouns. I don't mind it either in this instance. Uh, I'll leave that up to the pilot, depending on how the relationship goes. Um, Radiant Nine, hmm. which is a really dope name. <laughs> Thank you, Twilight Mirage Name Generator. Okay. Uh, yeah. Our pilot. If you are playing the pilot, use this section to construct your character. Choose three adjectives from the list below to describe the pilot, then choose any one of the three as a thing that sets you apart and mark it with a star. Other people and pilots in your world may share the other two attributes, but the one you start is what makes you the best candidate to pilot the mech. And then, once you're done, name yourself freely and introduce yourself to your co-pilot. Um... So the words are loyal, rash, healed, pledged, prophesied, cunning, cybernetic, unassuming, wicked, awoken, seasoned, cloned, inhuman, wild, natural, constructed, steadfast, encoded, brilliant, resonating, and beautiful. Wow, it's been a while since I've read this game and I'm like, oh, right, there are so many good options for pilots here. Mm -hmm. Um pleased um uh shout out to uh lids for your donation of five pounds thank you so much um oh the ticker's not working on the overlay uh we'll we'll make sure that's correct for the for the next one because neither of us are running the overlay so just yeah. mind if we have daily a bit of a lag but it's okay it's all good. It, it, it does generally have a bit of a lag, but um, okay. it's cool. It's uh, cool. It's cool. Uh, I have to type things. Um, I, I was literally already looking at these and had picked a couple and now I've forgotten what they were. Um, so valid. Oh, my God, my knee hurts. For the listeners at home, I slammed my knee into a chest of drawers in between sessions, which is what I get for stepping away from the computer, quite frankly. I should have known better. Oh, God. Um, so I am going to pick Steadfast. Hmm. Um, um, I'm going to pick cybernetic and Ooh. I have a reason for doing this that I will not say on this stream. Um, oh, um, hold on. I'm going to put it in, in our DM. No worries.
Um, <laughs> I'm sorry. I should not find that so funny. I'm an adult. I am a mature podcaster and streamer. It's very good, though. I just don't want to get served a cease and desist, so I'm, I'm not going to say it out loud. Um, sure, I'm amused by that pun and annoyed that I am amused by that pun. That was a lowercase Riley original, so... Um, Shout out to lowercase Riley. Um, and I think I'm going to take Wild and I'm going to star that one. Ooh, fun. Um, which is a very interesting say thing to say about this particular pilot. Uh, That's interesting alongside Steadfast as well. Oh, it I is. I really yep. like that. Okay. Yep. So the last thing that we need to decide before we can play, um, your conflict. No, you and your I, I, haven't, I haven't introduced myself yet. I'm so sorry. Please introduce yourself and forgive me. <laughs> it's okay. I love you. Um, hmm. I am playing uh, Veracity Sundown. Um, they use they them pronouns um, they are both a soldier and a healer um, they're a doctor as well but there are things that you have to do when you're at war so all right you and your co-pilot work against the threat but that does not mean you're always on the same side of every decision in random as access histories, you play a pair who have been brought into conflict with each other for some reasons, be it major or minor. You start in neither a state of full sync or full desync, uh, which is something that we'll explore further as we go on. Um, the conflict also start serves as a starting place for your story. To put your partner and decide what has changed to bring you to the start of this story. Some examples given um, are a bad first meeting throws both of you off course. An injury means you must change the way you battle. An old partner returns and throws a wrench in your communication. Or a shared connection with a past pilot puts a strain on your relationship. So... I have a thought of what it could be. Okay. Um, given the thing that you wrote, that you've already written about Veracity and Radiant 9, mm -hmm. um, what if it's because Radiant 9 has woken up? Ooh. And this has gone from a slightly more um pilot and their machine to true co-pilots yeah, yeah and they're both mm -hmm. adjusting to what that means yeah sweet um for uh context for the listener um veracity is a fairly fairly new character of mine um radiant nine is their mech and uh, Radiant is uh, sentient, but wasn't always sentient. Um, and they woke up on their own um, doing a dumb thing. Um, <laughs> I'm to say that because I wrote it. Um, and so if this is right after that, that's, mm. that's certainly a way to start. <laughs> Because I feel like conflict, I think a lot of people can immediately go to it being a negative thing because, but it's just a a, a thing. A, wow, I can't words and I don't have the excuse of just getting up. I barely had that excuse in stew pot, quite frankly. Um, so, but yeah, conflict doesn't have to be weighted with negative emotion. I don't think it has to be like resentful, but it just causes problems no there's just there's just things that are happening it's it's new and new things can be scary as all hell yeah so all right that's not the pdf i want this is the pdf i want play um to play take a deck of cards with the jokers removed i apologize if the jokers are still in there um it's been a while uh, and this is just me being critical role trust because my brain wants to just sing it's been a while so uh, these cards represent the memories you share uh, deal 13 cards to each player I will do that 13 cards 
what do you mean? Ah, uh, fine. To me and to Kales. Okay. Um, this is your memory bank, or more traditionally, your draw pile. Draw three cards from your memory bank into your hand. These are the memories that float close to the surface of your mind. Uh, we have the two index cards labeled sync and desync on the table where both players can reach them. Uh, the scenes play consists of a series in the war that you and your co-pilot are fighting. Players take turns establishing scenes by an, uh, naming an action they want to take. Actions can be small or large, but each should be a significant part of your journey oh, towards... Okay. You good? Drop my headphones. Ah. Um, actions can be small or large, but each should be a significant part of your journey towards or away from understanding each other. If you're having a hard time thinking of a scene, ask yourself, what's the biggest thing standing in our way and try and fix it? Uh, we role, pray role play freely. Um, if the scene is a battle, share the responsibility for narrating action. If a scene doesn't involve both mech and pilot, your co-pilot can step in to play other characters or the world around them. If both mech and pilot are present, along with other characters, take turns stepping in to play them. Um, and then we will interact um, memories during these scenes, which is the bloom, as mentioned at the top. It allows you and your co-pilot to relive memories together. This can happen regardless of distance between you. It can happen in battle or even if you are a scene where only one of you is physically present. At any point in the scene, the player who did not establish may play a memory from their hand and immediately draw another. The suit determines the subject of the memory you share and the number, the strength or importance. We can sort of share those as we go through. Um, the player who plays the memory outlines the memory, but the other should feel free to make suggestions or ask clarifying questions. When the memory is done, you return to the scene, continue role playing as if you have returned from a flashback. Play out how it affects you having relived it with your co-pilot. If it made you angry being that into the scene, if it only made you more confused about them, play out that confusion. If you are the one who shared it and it hurt to relive that, then bring the hurt forward. And if you're in battle, consider that memory's effect on the battle. Once the scene's done, we'll start whether um, we are closer to an understanding or whether barriers have gone up. And we'll, uh, we'll go from there. All right, all right, all right, all right. I need to draw three cards into my hand. Oh my gosh, they're all, I should have set them to be face down. Okay. Roll 20. How do I pull up the deck and look at its functions? I don't know. You're uh, the GM, try... so you should be able to do... Oh, roll 20. Come on. Yeah. Be a buddy. Be a buddy. Maybe I should recall, and then we should just take cards. I can't remember. Because I, mean... I haven't been able to... Because you mm -hmm. draw three, you 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 keep three of the cards um, mm -hmm. th from the memory bank that we have in our hand, which means that yeah. three of the cards that you dealt to us are mm. technically in our hand, even though these are all in our hand. Yeah, I think it's the idea is that you can't see, you can only effectively choose from the ones in your hand. So I'm just going to do the top three that I can see because I made them all face up by accident. So I'm just going to... It's fine. I'm just gonna the first three of the three in my hand, and that's how I'm gonna play it. So, because roll twenty. Ah. All right. Uh, so with that, um, <laughs> I'm already emo too. Um, so scenes. Do you have an, an idea for one, my darling friend Chaos, who <laughs> at 25 to 6 in the morning on what less than three hours sleep? Killing the game. Um, I mean, I do, actually. Um, Sweet. Because I was thinking about uh, something. Um, not not like immediately, immediately, but like fairly immediately following like the awakening mm -hmm. um and um veracity feeling uh sort of disconnected from radiant because they like haven't been able to um co-pilot since uh the accident and 
feeling like they need to like just like go and um talk to them okay um, veracity and- was injured right in that accident quite badly is this like back at base camp patched up and now going to see yeah mm-hmm. all right it's possible that um this is actually um that was actually the accident where they got their cybernetic arm oh wow i like that um I hadn't been thinking about that, but that's actually really, really cool. Um, mm-hmm. I like that a lot. So Sweet. they're also just getting used to their, uh, <laughs> uh-huh. their new a whole bunch of stuff. Okay. Yeah. All right. They just want something that they like know, you know. Mm-hmm. So do they get in to Radiant Nine? I think they get in, but they don't, like, rig up, right? Mm-hmm. There's still, right. like, a big old, big old hole cut into Radiant's chest. Um, mm. It's, like, the edges are not, like, uh, like, as jagged anymore, but um, mm-hmm. it's still, because uh, it, but they haven't, like, really started patching it yet, so Veracity can just kind of, like, wiggle themselves in. Mm-hmm. And just kind of like sit there not even in the not even in like the pilots whatever i don't know exactly what it is inside i think it's i think it's pacific rim style nice with the jaeger so there's not like an actual pilot seat you like lock in and take the controls mm-hmm. and stuff yeah um but they just like kind of like sit down um some lights flicker on not like the full bank of lights it's more just like the immediate control yeah i'm gonna lean in i think it's two lights like a pair of eyes slowly Mm. flicker on like a pair of eyes opening when somebody's asleep or been asleep and um veracity feels this wave of concern um an apprehension and um there's fear around it there's um there's a sharpness to the edges of it that doesn't feel like anger it feels like that surge of adrenaline that you get and that back on the that fight or flight mechanism kicking in um it's almost like a taste of copper in the back of veracity's mouth as they hit with this like little wave of emotion Mm. off veracity uh, off radiant nine yeah um veracity kind of like holds their um their cybernetic arm to their chest and then rests their like their still flesh hand on the um floor (laughs) that's about the only thing that you can reach they're not like up against the wall or anything um Mm. all right and I mean, what Radiant gets off of them is more just, uh, just like a bone weary tiredness. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but, uh, slow, uh, like, like Radiant can feel the tension kind of leeching out of them as they kind of sit there. All right. I think this is when the memory happens. I'm just looking at my options. Um, mm. hmm. What is this memory? <sighs> hmm. Okay. Um, I'm going to put this in the middle for now. Uh, six of diamonds Uh, diamonds are memories of strong emotion um, and then the scale goes from two is a minor memory that may be shared with little worry up to an ace which is a memory that is fundamental to who you are and your conception of yourself so we're somewhere in the middle it's important but not formative Mm -hmm. hmm 
How do I phrase this? Uh, uh, um. Yeah, I think it's um, you. You've seen Firefly, right, Kales? Yes. Yeah, we'll continue to steal stuff from Joss Whedon because he doesn't deserve it, and we're far more forward-thinking and not assholes. Um, we're also not racist. We're trying we're not to be racist. We're, no, so we're trying our damnedest. Um, but it's the moment um, of veracity meeting Radiant Nine, Oof. and it's like the um, I forget. I can oh it's um uh, not objects in space adrift where we see Mal meeting uh looking at Serenity for the first time. Mm. It's like the the memory I think is huge. It has that sort of color to it, and maybe it's like the sun streaming in. But um, Radiant Nine's hatch is open, and like systems are like idling, and the memory comes as to Brassy's like this series of um, sensory inputs more than anything else uh, and there's this like edge of curiosity but wariness um, and it's not I suppose because they're not awake yet but I suppose I have I, a question about this though please do you get do you get the reverse emotions from them where How's... where mm. um, veracity has that you know little bit of apprehension little bit of fear I love that. I like that. Um, but the memory is Veracity experiencing what their own emotions are like to Radiant Nine. So it's like seeing a, refle a reflection of yourself or re a recording mm -hmm. that somebody else has done of you. It's like seeing yourself from the outside. Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's that. God. Look, folks. <sighs> Nobody vetoed Kales and I get him to play sad mech games. <laughs> so um, <laughs> here we are. <laughs> Once again, who let us play games together with no adult supervision? Yep, everyone else is asleep. <laughs> um, I do want to move that into sync. Um, mm -hmm. Because... Um, veracity just kind of smiles and it's like <sighs> hmm I'm trying to think of what they say here um and i'm definitely still like mostly asleep uh mm -hmm. brain wise i'm totally functional but like my brain is just like mm. yeah that's like that's fine veracity is probably on some painkillers right now good yeah lean in um, i think i think what it is is a veracity just kind of smiles and this wave of fondness uh rolls off of them mm. um I love that. and maybe that's that's all it is okay i think more lights sort of flicker on um and that some of that nervousness dissipates and you get um hmm. i think it's like almost like um a small video plays like that it's not and it's not a memory it's something that um it's like an actual video yeah, like like something pulled off YouTube or or a fucking TikTok, or or something like something that uh, Radiant Nine has picked up from the cloud, um, as it were. Um, I'm trying to think what it is. I think it's like um, some like probably a, a joke thing, just like something um, about like not a rejection. Um. And they played that and there's that fear of worry and then um there's the feeling of that being deleted mm. and that fear of rejection has 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 been put to rest and that's the sort of wave you get from that's the input you get from radiant nine 
for our, for our listeners when guess i'm talking about this like yeah radiant nine doesn't talk using words i was like huh okay i i, I can i can work with this uh, so this is where part of the patchwork aspect comes in just just taking vines off youtube <laughs> yeah but vines and just um on a point of reference for me when I was thinking about this, I forget what the name of the episode is, but uh, I think it's season four of New Who, um, where Amy is trying to remember the Doctor. And it's like Petrichor, a red balloon and all yes, that. Yes, yes, and it's yes, that yes. Fla- that repeating of images over and over again. Mm-hmm. That's how I wanted to think about um, Radiant Nine communicating, like that mix of emotions and images and found found footage almost. <sighs> So. Oh, that's so good. Um, um, all right. So yeah. that that feels like a good. I mean, I like think Rafferty good. laughs, but I think that that's a good that's a good scene. And I think you even get like that crumple sound, like when you delete something on a Mac. <laughs> I think you get that. <laughs> so, all right. Um, my turn to frame a scene. Mm-hmm. I think this is a little later and hmm, I think there's been an attack and I really like the stuff becoming a priority Um, and this is in like the hangar Mm -hmm. and I like the thought there's the sounds of something happening outside and I'm now just really upset by the thought of this um Oh, what it is, is the outside of the building is like broadcasting music super loud. And it's muffled inside by this point, but it's a countermeasure for these compelling, unearthly voices of the host. Mm-hmm. And it's how we sort of counteract it when we're just not in this. We maybe we do it in battle as well, but maybe it's like that that compulsion is trying to to happen. It's one of the t- strategies that they use. And so that that's happening outside and this building is like blasting its own music back i don't know whether it's a music we know or whether it's just some fun noise um all i can think of is like pop punk and shit right now because that's the kind of vibe i've been listening to a lot recently yeah valid Um, i my brain just went sabotage by the beastie boys but we can't pull a star trek beyond so i'm not gonna say that that's actually what it is (laughs) But I like the thought that maybe whoever's on security detail gets to pick the music, so you get some really wild choices of what music is being uh, played to counteract the uh, the host's compulsion at any given time. We're probably at the point where we like know everyone on security so well that we can tell shift based yes. on what music they're playing. I love that. I love that. Um, but yeah, uh, to clarify, and um, this is. Radiant Nine um, finishing being repaired, um, so they and Veracity can go back out. This yeah. is like the I think it's the finishing up of the repairs. Also, like any um, adjustments inside that need to be made now that one of um, to work better with uh, Veracity's new cybernetic, and like mm-hmm. there's been some new stuff added because of that. Yeah, um, I don't think the rest of the the um force knows uh, that radiant woke up cool i dig that um which i don't know if that's a choice i i think veracity is not telling anyone and then radiant nine sure isn't telling anybody (laughs) yeah um but it's it's for i think on some level it's less like veracity is worried that something's gonna happen and more like veracity doesn't think it's important like it's like whatever they woke up interesting like like it it shouldn't be a big deal it's a big deal Mm -hmm. to them but it shouldn't be a big deal to everyone else and they know Mm -hmm. that it will become a big deal and they're like nope (laughs) Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not dealing with that um so i think veracity is trying to help with the repairs as much as possible Mm -hmm. though now that they've like mostly healed up yeah uh, their arm isn't super cooperating with them, but mm-hmm. um, 
it is um so it's so it's a little bit slow going because they're still trying to get used to this um supposedly intuitive piece of machinery that's not super intuitive mm-hmm. uh, but they like are not gonna let anyone try to be doing repairs on radiant while they are mm-hmm. not there love it especially not now um mm-hmm. So, um, I think during this, like while this is happening, um, oh god, I'm trying to think of like various scenes in movies where like small robots or animals or even other characters are like hiding behind things, and there's like that conversation eyes to eyes, just like you cannot let people see you. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's like that kind of feeling Rusty gets of being peeped at over a wall or something <laughs> just like them trying to not let anyone else know that they're awake yeah um but like checking in because like they're being poked around at like there's somebody interfacing with their systems right now um so yeah i do think i do think that veracity talks to radiant nine or talk to radiant nine even before they woke up oh absolutely um, and now i'm like i'm like oh god like veracity is like midway through uh soldering some stuff together and they went oh my god i'm poking around and radiant's insides and like it's like oh my god uh, uh how how are you doing are you are you good like very much like oh god i'm just doing this and i didn't ask any of this and oh um i think this is not a memory bloom style memory um i think (laughs) over the link radiant nine puts back a memory of a time where um veracity had an itchy label in something they were wearing like a new shirt underneath their flight suit or whatever, or there was like a slight rip in their plug suit and they just would not like, this is driving me crazy. I I know Kales will understand this big mood of sensory stuff, but just, yeah. And and like, (laughs) Brady Nine like feeds back like that. It's just like, this is what it's like. This is what it's like. Uh, Okay. Okay. As long as, as long as, um, God, I have a uh, hold on a second because I have a really uh, I have I have a bunch of small cards. Mm. Um, I have a bunch of small cards because hmm. I was gonna say that this um, does trigger a memory mm-hmm. of. Uh, uh, one time that that happened, and um, uh, clubs and memories tied to places or objects. Yeah. Oh, nice. Um, and Veracity had like a really just like who knows it was like a rock in their flight Oof. suit or whatever. Uh huh. Um, and they couldn't shake it, and they were in the middle of sync. Um. Mm-hmm. And they were like, oh my god. And this was this is long before. Um they, so they've been this is a memory from they've been piloting for a while, but this is like long before like Radiant woke up, but mm-hmm. um Veracity uh, there's this memory of um it, it, it triggers this memory of um Radiant like stepping wrong. Mm. And the rockets, uh, the the impact of that shakes the rock loose. Mm. Um, and um, veracity, kind of just being like, "Oh my god, that was you! Mm-hmm. <laughs> that wasn't the terrain. You did that." Oh, I love that. Oh, that feels like sync. Absolutely. <laughs> Um. Hmm. Uh, 
think uh, as the as the memory ends, um, while like maybe you're doing some soldering and like connecting things, like the pistons in um, Brady and I's legs go uh, in a similar kind of way to the memory. Mm-hmm. Like maybe it's one leg than the other leg, um, like a little wriggle almost. Um, <laughs> that could be written off as you poking a wire. Uh, because obviously somebody else is there. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm not trying to play down Radiant Nine's intelligence, but also it's a little bit puppy esque. Like, <laughs> sort of like, yes, I did this thing. Um, because they are awoken, that doesn't imply like a certain level of. Like they were already intelligent, but now it's like there's an awareness that was that was there wasn't there before, um, and they're getting to experience things in a different way. So in a way, Radiant Nine is quite young. Yeah, this is this is very much a um, this is very much a thing where it's like Radiant Nine was always intelligent, but now they can move on their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and. But what I think, what I think, veracity says to that is ticklish, huh? Hmm. I think you get um, a, like a, a like a bubbling amusement, and maybe a a clip of your own laughter. Oh. <laughs> oh. Gosh. <laughs> um All right. and the whoever the other person that's working in the back like reaches out and kind of like 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 you know jokingly but like kind of like socks uh veracity in the arms like pay attention <laughs> right, so it's like i i am i am leave me alone <laughs> <laughs> good all right um, your scene. My scene. Mm, I don't have any other ideas. Um, it could, I mean, it could be just the first time they go out after. Yeah. And trying to, I think what this looks like is them trying to get used to co-piloting when mm-hmm. perhaps he knows that Radiant is perfectly capable of controlling um, mm. himself, but isn't like quite aware of it yet. Yeah. Like they like know, but like they don't like really know. Mm-hmm. I'm sorry, I'm quickly looking through the document for other stuff. You're fine. Uh, yeah. Um just like the bloom is what allows an integral pair to share memories, but also allows you to share other things. The bloom can contain your feelings, your literal thought, or even bits of what you are sensing at the moment. Um at any time whether in a scene or a memory, whether you are the establishing party or not, you can ask your co-pilot what is blooming from you right now. They will share something with you. Uh, you can do this even if you're role-playing a scene where only one co-pilot is physically present. What you get from the bloom might be the only thing your character knows about the goings-on, or it might enhance the story you get later. Um, also, when I put out there, there is uh, if it's your turn to share a memory and there's no memory in your hand that you feel comfortable sharing, you have another option. An entangled person may construct a memorial wall in their mind to prevent memories or emotion from being shared. All you must do is to focus your mind on some sort of barrier, tell your partner what the barrier is and that you've constructed the wall. For the rest of the scene, neither of you may ask about the bloom. For while the memory wall is up, there is nothing. And at the end of the scene, add a tally mark to the desync pile. So uh, just wanted to uh, pop those out there. So is this like a full-on battle? Or is this like a recon mission or something like that? I think it's a recon mission. I don't think that they would try to send a... um, uh, 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 Unless it was like an absolute emergency, I don't think that they would be trying to send a um, newly like reforged uh co-pilot mm-hmm. pair yeah uh, into a into a heavy battle yeah all right what's blooming from veracity right now um the 
there is a fair bit of trepidation mm-hmm. um probably as time goes on it develops into frustration um mostly directed at themselves not as much directed at radiant um yeah because it's not it 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 was really easy bef- it was really easy before they had to try and uh co-pilot together again and now it's yeah. not as simple as yeah. um it, they can't just go back to oh like grip like grip oh. oof yeah. Um, they can't just go back to, um, like, Veracity was like, oh, we'll just, like, slip back into, you know, what mm-hmm. we had before. It was really easy to kind of, like, reconnect, like, as our, like, emotionally. Um, but, like, now that they're, like, actually out co-piloting, it's, like, and it's not, like, and it's, like, Veracity's trying. And it's probably that because they're trying too hard yeah yeah um but hmm and how angst gremlin do i want to go with this memory i'd like to put out it's real the real problem Mm. is is that the frustration is mostly directed towards themselves but it is bleeding out in ways that yeah like very muddled hey hyper empathy yo 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 um Okay, my thing is I've got two different diamonds right now, which is strong emotion again. Mm. Um, and I could go, this could be either a minor memory or I can make this super, like, fundamental. Like, I am literally at either end of the scale here. So. Hmm. Okay. Um. Hmm. I just got brought homemade cookies, so I'm not sorry. Holy shit. Yeah. Oh, they, they're, oh my god, they're warm and gooey. I need to not eat that right now, and I need to concentrate. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Your, part, your partner is so good. <laughs> G is a foodie and likes to cook, so periodically I will be gifted with taste of goods. Um, okay, 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 I got it. It's not in desync, it's just on the map. So this is the King of Diamonds. So this is, uh, reminded of the Ace, this is a memory that is fundamental uh, to who I am and a uh, concept of myself. Um, and so th- this wave of like frustration comes through uh, and veracity gets hit with this memory and it was not long after the two of them had been piloting together and i think what this is and you can um you can tell me um if i'm out of line on the on the characterization on this uh, cows and i think it was the two of them trying to get somewhere uh, where veracity is needed in their capacity as a doctor more Mm -hmm. than a soldier and flying was not an option and it was um i'm such an asshole god um (laughs) sorry um you see the first never-ending story movie yes imagine like it's been a minute but i've seen it Right, ima- this is like the two of them like hip deep in mud trying to get well, and it's not full on swamps of sadness. Oh, fuck off. Fuck off. Yeah. This is the Thank worst you. part of the whole movie. Yes, it is. Which is why I said I'm an asshole. Um, God, Jade. Yeah. Um, and I <laughs> think <could> do? <laughs> it's this same frustration then. Um, and veracity is almost crying with frustration because they need to be at this place and they aren't there yet mm-hmm. and they're frustrated with themselves and they're frustrated at the terrain and they're frustrated that their mech is not getting them where they need to be 
and Radiant Nine feels like they are failing the person that they are meant to help because they are not good enough at what they are doing to get them there and it's this feeling in the memory of this cannot happen again and that rage and desperation and frustration i think in the memory i don't think we necessarily need to define what happens but i like this moment of radiant nine unprompted maybe um rasty like lashed out or something like just physically like did a gesture and because of the way the mech is wired up it could have been them that did this but mm. maybe it wasn't and like um the jet booster on the back fired and the heat like blooming out was enough to like dry out enough what they're on to try and get footing again but like it could have been it could have gone really badly in that moment that happening the yeah. two of them could have been just fucking stuck but no i i want this um there was that super negative emotion but between the two of them i think like they got out of that and they could get out of this but i think the memory in the moment maybe they did get out of it and it was all okay maybe it wasn't as good as it could have been but they did make it out because obviously they're still here to talk about it right. but it's that the memory chiefly is the two of them stuck somewhere just the two of them together and that need to be doing something that they couldn't do in that moment mm. well that's what the memory is mm. i just took my glasses off and now i can't see um mm. the sun is rising um, hmm. The cookies are really good. <laughs> I really want fucking cookies. Fuck. Can you just Sorry, send me friend. one? You think it'll survive? I mean, I don't know how good it's going to taste when it gets there. Is the problem? <laughs> I know that's that's the problem. Cause I really want it like right now. I'm sorry. I'll send you the recipe later, though. Uh, can, can we just like can, can we just like invent quantum entanglement teleporters now so that you can send? Oh, me just right now. Yeah, let me just pull yeah. out my notes. <laughs> <laughs> just, just See flame con bitches. <laughs> um, yes. If we can if we can do cookies now, we can definitely get to you, you sized yeah. people. Yeah, sure. By August. 100%. Sure. <laughs> um. so the memory ends we're back yeah just on this recon mission i do think that the memory was powerful enough that it kind of knocked veracity off balance a little bit mm -hmm. um like that's a lot of fucking things to be feeling right now mm -hmm. especially when you're yeah. already feeling like frustrated and kind of powerless and uncertain yeah. and not really like in a super like stable position yeah absolutely just emotionally and it kind of just kind of just kind of knocks them off um but they do like once they kind of regain themselves and i do kind of think this ends up in desync sure um like all the times though, for Radiant Nine to do that. <laughs> yeah. Cause I think even though Veracity kind of like sighs and it's like, I know we'll it'll 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 it'll, it'll work out somehow. Like Radiant mm. can tell that they're still just like feeling really just like out of sorts about the whole thing. And it's not any it's not Veracity doesn't feel like um, Radiant shouldn't have like woken up or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, like, like they're absolutely like not feeling that, 
but Mm -hmm. the emotions are so complex that it can it definitely can come off like that yeah if that is the way that radiant chooses to interpret those feelings yeah like it was simpler before Mm -hmm. i don't want to go back but god it was simpler before it's it's you know it's new i have to get used to it it's just so hard and it's it's a lot right now Mm, i think a couple of lights shut off not essential lights but it's like the electrical equivalent of somebody pulling back a little oh whoops yeah um, like just withdrawing to give somebody their space and obviously <laughs> ready and can't do that mm-hmm. huh a radiant nine has shifting capacities i think the cockpit shape changes ever so slightly um oh. Like, it gets a little bigger. Like, when you see glass being blown, like that kind of gentle expansion. Yeah. That happens a little bit. Like, you hear plates shifting, and it's like... Like, Radiant Nine is trying to give Veracity room to breathe. Mm. And be less oppressive around them. Oh, buddy. Do we think that's sane? Yeah, I think so. All right. Hmm. What do I want to frame next? (laughs) Oh, my God. I'm so tired. Oh, friend. I'm so sorry. You can go back to sleep after this. It's okay. I'm supposed to go out with a friend for her birthday and I'm just like I don't know if I can oh I'm so sorry and I feel bad because I'm bailing on her for the third year in a row Uh so I really should go and also I really need to eat something but I'm like Mm -hmm. well how about we do the scene and have you got the means to go grab something to eat because if so we'll quick we can have a quick two minutes if you want to go grab a snack before. No, I'm all right. I, I'm not. I'm not really like worried about it right now. I'm just like okay. Oh. All right. This is me <laughs> wanting to go back to sleep. Mood. Okay. What's the biggest thing standing in our way? Hmm. Hmm. I think they do the recon mission, and it's a success. Mm-hmm. and they're cleared for full duty um, <clears throat> gosh excuse me I think this next scene is a battle is a what? is a battle okay I don't Rusty's role in combat is more of a medic kind of a vibe or what I don't know what you were maybe thinking for them. Um, um. I think they're more on the medic side um, in okay. combat, um, but they are a you know perfectly capable soldier, marks marks person. Um, so like, they are capable of defending themselves, but they are primarily there as a as a medic, as as evac. I think also. Mm, I like that. All right. Uh, Because when you got a big robot. Mm -hmm. And maybe also this is the way that they're getting eased back into. um, They're they're getting eased back into combat. Is they're like, you're primarily on evac duty right now. Okay. Um, Mm. um, Okay. So um, it's that. Where'd my feather cheetah go? Um, It's where I left it. It's in Firefox. (laughs) Funnily enough. Um, the tab's right. 
Mm. Is this a space battle or a planet side battle? Um, planet side. All right. Um, hmm. In which case, here's something kind of upsetting as a as a sensory thing. I think oh, as no. well as like the the yells of there's like gun there's like a weapon fire and engines. I think even above all of that and the sounds of the engines of the mechs, there is this rustling sound of thousands of wings. Oof. And it's oppressive. And it's but it's not but it's too irregular to turn to white noise. Mm-hmm. But there's just that that sound around. Oh, hate angels that. are scary. Go. Angels are scary. <laughs> um. And maybe we're getting we're in the process of clearing, getting somebody off the battlefield. Look, we have another, we're in evac mode right now. We've got somebody. Yeah. Uh, I think Veracity is going to try and cue something up to just kind of just try to try to drown out the oppressive mm -hmm. wings sound, even if it's just other white noise. Mm -hmm. Just to counteract static with static. Um, mm -hmm. But like legit static. Sure. Um, mostly for themselves, I think. Yeah. Um, so what's the memory here? Um, I don't know if it's called yet. Okay. Um, what was, uh, what's that thing? The memorial wall? No, 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 no. Um, okay. Here it is. What is blooming from you now? Mm, okay. Mm. Oh, um, you get um images of birds of birds that you have seen um like before and other flying creatures that you and while piloting radiant nine that you have seen and it's like while you are doing the static thing to mm -hmm. try and balance it out radiant is trying to assert positive memories with that sound and it's just mm. like playing those kinds of things just like it's like that way you justify when you hear a bump in the night it's just, oh it's just the pipes yeah radiant night it's just like it's just this it's just this think of these instead it's just birds it's just birds it's just that's birds. really good just big birds <laughs> lots of birds um this might end up being a memorial wall Ooh. Um, and I don't think it's necessarily a it is a little bit of a desync thing, but I think it's I think it's preempted with the veracity being like we need to be able to concentrate. Okay. I need to be able to concentrate. I can't I I just just for now, like mm -hmm. um I'm just gonna um just uh let's see what does it say about memorial walls. Can you describe the barrier or tell your partner what the barrier is and that you have constructed it. Um so um I think it is I think it's birds. Mm-hmm. I think veracity takes the birds that um, radiant is feeding them, and um, 
is um, using the birds as the white noise in their head to kind of just be like, to mm -hmm. kind of like, because they can't concentrate. And in order to shut it out, they need to shut all of it out, mm -hmm. um, which hurts. But um, they will be more successful this way. Is there a, like a visual of just like feathers? Yes. Mm. Good shit. Good shit. Hurts me in my soul place. All right. So you get no emotions and because of how um because of how um, and this is, I think, is why it's desync. Mm -hmm. Because of how Radiant 9 communicates exclusively through imagery and emotions and shared yeah. memories, they can't talk. They cannot communicate right now. Uh, yeah. And um, hmm. And I think it's just like a shared system, just like this is where we're going. And it's like being blindfolded and somebody has to lead you. Yeah. I don't think it's, it's, I don't think that it's like they've not done this before, but it's mm. very, very, it must be very, very weird for Radiant being mm -hmm. awoken now. Yeah. And not being able to see. It's like trying to take a step back and remembering how they did it before. Yeah. And it's hard. And and that's where the desync comes in. Because mm -hmm. they literally feel dis so disconnected from veracity in that moment. Cool and upsetting. <laughs> Woof. Woof. Um, I post in the chat. Mm -hmm. Woof. Woof. It is your turn to frame a scene. I think I'm going to frame the scene immediately following that. There's mm -hmm. nothing in the rules that says that I can't show the scene where the wall is dropped. Mm. Good. Good. So, that is what I'm going to do. All right. Once, once everything's died down and they're just like kind of, um, I like if if Veracity steers them to like a secluded corner and then just like drops the birds. Mm -hmm. <sighs> mm. Okay. 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 <laughs> I'm looking at my cards. I think because I think a memory immediately you drop the wall and it's like bang. Oh yeah, valid, valid. <laughs> oh, I was reading the wrong thing, and now I'm reading what the correct suit, and now I'm like, oh, oh no. Okay, I'm just gonna drop this card in for you, and um. Oh no. That's... So, uh, I played the Queen of Spades, spades being memories of action that you did or was done to you. It is the aftermath of the accident where, um, Radiant woke up and it is the memory of an unconscious veracity being disconnected from them and taken out to be go have medical attention and Radiant 9 alone not being able to hear them or feel them or see them awake and alone and terrified fuck 
goth jade. I'm doing what I am set here on this planet to do. No, which it's is to you. make Kale swear at me. <laughs> it's like six thirty in the morning. You're welcome. <laughs> How dare you? Press F to pay respects in the chat for my feelings. <laughs> I think what happens is that um, because um, Radiant being awake now that means that Veracity doesn't have to be connected in order for them to communicate. Mm -hmm. And um, they disconnect um, and they, God, I have to think about where this is. Mm hmm I'm just putting that tally there for the memorial wall going up. Because you don't put the card there, but it yeah. needs to be indicated. This is extremely this is this this feels extremely stupid. Mm -hmm. This feels extremely stupid. And I'm saying that from Veracity's perspective. It's not from mine, but it's okay. the best thing that I can come up. It's the best thing that I can come up with. And Veracity feels very dumb. And but they go over to the wall. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of like stretch their arms out mm -hmm. and plaster themselves to the wall mm -hmm. because it's the best way that they can think to give Radiant a hug. Mm. God, that's good. Um, and I think unknowingly they are on the left i i mean i think unconsciously they have made their way to the left side of radiant nine's chest mm -hmm. where uh a heart would be in a human mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yes and they have their ear pressed to the wall like mm -hmm. you would to a person whose heart is beating yeah um and they also have their chest pressed to the wall. So mm -hmm. Radiant can feel their heart beating. Mm -hmm. um, um, and the so remorse. Oh, good chat. To clarify, is this on the inside of the cockpit or the outside? Oh, this is on the inside of the cockpit. This Perfect. is a very awkward looking situation. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. I think... Um, the inverse of what I described before, like the um, the cockpit contracts in size, and it's like an exhale, like all the air goes out for a second of in relief, and it's like it doesn't fully envelop because I don't think I can't like I don't necessarily think really I can contract that small. Mm -hmm. but like as close around as close as they can get to hugging them back yeah while veracity is inside them and they don't have their limbs and stuff so yeah yeah and there is uh through the link as a uh, use of the remorse it's just like hmm God, how do I express this as a visual or an emotion rather than words? Because really, I... Hmm. Okay, it's pieced together from different things that um, Veracity has said in the cockpit before. It's like literally like a piecemeal, so it's got that slightly broken up quality of, wh of when you do that. And in their own voice, but from Radiant, Veracity hears... I don't know who I am without you. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, God. I think, I do think that that's the first time that. Is it the first time that Veracity's heard them do this? Uh, yes. Let's, let's have it be. Let's have it be that. That's so disconcerting, but it's so funny. <laughs> Um, and they kind of just like startle a little bit, but they they kind of just sigh and 
uh, try to hold on tighter and they can't really because they're just like plastered against a fucking wall. Yeah. Like a weirdo. Mm-hmm. It's good. Um, it's good shit. I like it. It's good shit. It's it's yep, it's important. Um mm-hmm. and they just say, um Um, something along the lines of, uh, I, I promise to never leave you alone, not for good. I'll always be here. And then something along the lines of, we, we, we got to figure out a way to communicate though, when that happens, because I can't promise that I'm, I I can't promise that I'm not going to do that again. You get this sort of wave of um, acknowledgement, like, you're right, and you should say it, kind yeah. of a thing. I don't, I don't want to leave you hanging like that, if I can help it, but sometimes, sometimes we've got to, okay? Uh, you get the visual of training drills that you've done before um Mm. and the same loop plays and plays and plays again and just the the vibe of just practice practice makes perfect Hmm. good and i put that in sync to be clear yeah for people who may not be actually watching this right now mm-hmm. um it is in sync all right all right all right just doing a tweet getting the word out people should come see us making each other sad the usual <laughs> the usual, the usual. Shit. It's mm-hmm. God, it's my turn for a scene. What do I want to do this time? For for oh. people who are are who might be wondering and just not saying anything, in chat. Um, I will I will talk about what happened at the accident at some point. Mm. I have I have no reservations that it is. I, I I have I have full expectations that it is going to come up. Okay, okay, okay. Um, excuse me I think it's going to have to be I like the thought of it being a training drill like, they're working they're working on this yeah I don't I think the scene necessarily has to involve the memorial wall going up and then reacting to that um Though they can be, but I feel it's not in the same way that it is mechanically written. So, so yeah, I what I think it might look more like is um, them. It's not that it's the memorial wall. It's 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 not like a solid wall. It's something that it's it's something that Veracity sets up that Radiant can break through mm-hmm. if if it gets to be too much. Mm-hmm. Like it's that. it's like when you when you use training swords and it's like the wood won't actually hurt you but mm-hmm. the the and it, and it's it's a different weight but it's something that you can work with in the meantime to kind of get used to the idea of what it is that you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. Okay, cool. I dig that. Um... Oh, it's so cold. Oh, it's so cold. Oh, friend. Another blanket. Some more I just, socks. Just stuck my feet out and my whole my whole calves down to my feetsies were just cold. Oh. But my foot's falling asleep too. Oh, no. oh. So we, we've got this this training scene and like they're they're working out um little ways of um 
of doing this and ways that maybe Rusty can one the practicing what it feels like the rush that comes after a wall dropping because it's like a dam like when yes. it drops it's, it's like getting used to that influx of emotions from each other as well um but also these drills are like what does it look like us moving around when the wall is up yes so um so is the memory one that comes up is it one that sort of like kind of falls through in the post wall dropping rush or is this something that maybe veracity thinks about as they train hmm. i think it could be either one i'm gonna draw this card it is just it's i've got a fuckload of these fucking tiny little cards um so i drew the three of diamonds which is just small it's strong emotion but small strong emotion it's just like a tiny moment um oh you know what it is this is really this is really small but i like it i think it's cute um mm -hmm. there was a time when uh radiant came back from a repair mm. um from a repair job um where brassity like went back to radiant after a repair job and like the people who had like done the work like um just like put a new coat of paint <laughs> on uh radiance arms yeah and it was just a, a, like a like a oh you look really nice like like oh I, I like the i like the colors that they they used here it's a it's a cute it's a nice little change that's cute as hell I had like another idea for it, but I like this one better for now because it's cute, and then I'll save the other one for a little bit. Yeah, it is cute. All right. Um. Hmm. I think the memory ends. This is a very human kind of reaction, but I'm gonna lean in because why not? Uh, well, that's the, the whole thing, right? Is that mm -hmm. radiant being sentient means that they're reacting in ways that are mm. um, more, more. Yeah. Um, I think uh, the memory ends, and uh, <laughs> radiant has stopped moving. Um, because <laughs> uh, I think they had forgotten that because it seemed kind of inconse inconsequential at the time oh yeah but but now they're awoken um and i think you get like a little kind of a tiktok line kind of thing of somebody uh like putting their hand to their chest or maybe one on their face um maybe they're quoting a movie or something like that but i basically want the vibe of you think i'm pretty <laughs> like <laughs> coming through <laughs> Um, and just sort of like, I think a bunch of lights inside like flare a little brighter for a second, and it's like Radiant Nine is blushing. Oh, I knew you were gonna say that. I knew that Radiant was gonna blush. Oh, <laughs> oh that's so cute. <laughs> and Veracity yeah. just kind of laughs, and it's this good deep, this good deep chuckle. And I don't think that Radiant has heard it for a while. Mm, good shit. Um, like, like, and it, it's 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 it was really tense before the accident happened as well. So it's not like it's not like oh, Radiant hasn't heard Veracity like this laugh like this since the accident. It's like no, this was before the accident as well. It's it's just been a while. It's been a rough war, um, but um veracity laughs this like good deep chuckle and it's like i always think you look nice hmm. uh you hear back and i'm voting for this going in sync you get back and i think this comes through the internal speakers mm -hmm. um and there aren't many but it's like um, a series of 
recordings of Veracity laughing and or oh. giggling or doing like a little huff of amusement. Um, and you get uh, this surge of affection <laughs> uh, through the link. Uh, and it's basically just like, I love the way you laugh. Oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> You've got my address, Kyle. Come fight me. <laughs> it's true. I do have your address. I'll be on the next flight out. Booyah. Sorry, we'll go boss get... man. I'm not coming into work tomorrow. I have to go kick my friend's ass. <laughs> oh, good shit. Good shit. All right. This is going too well. I need to have a dramatic scene. We've had. <laughs> oh, three need. I got it, I got it, I got it. We've got like an hour. So, you know, we got time. Um, it's good. We got time. We got time. I got time. Shoot. Uh, now I'm just thinking about the Incredibles. Focus, Jade. Use your autism powers for focus. Huh. Um, scene. Yeah, I said in our uh, DM chat before that my brain is super three hour game mm -hmm. what why mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it, it is going a lot faster than i expected it to but Hell yeah it is, it is very much like wow okay mm -hmm. all right so they've been doing their training they've gotten uh <laughs> sorry just chaos in our chat <laughs> making me laugh um so they've been practicing uh and they feel more secure in um, their uh, capacity to, to not have things hit the fan due to them <laughs> on a battlefield or on a mission. Mm -hmm. um, I want to do something about the enemy. And I don't know. Hmm. This is very. This is Cal this is approaching Calvin Ball territories, um, but hey, Ben, what up? <sighs> I think he's asleep, and probably rightly so. What if Ben is ben uh, currently in uh, Zach's time zone? So yeah, <laughs> good. Or Sleep is good. around Zach's time zone. Uh huh. Um, what if? Well, I suppose it doesn't have to be that. Our enemy is compelling. I really want to do a scene that involves that kind of influence. Because I'm thinking compelling in like the enchantment compulsion sense of being made to do things mm -hmm, as opposed mm -hmm. to cannot look away. Um, but what the thought I was having was maybe this is during a dream. Oh no. Um, before you continue on and break my heart, uh, thank you to the anonymous person who also donated five pounds. Thank you. Much appreciated. I, I just checked for the first time in uh, a minute. <laughs> That's great. When I say a minute, I mean an hour. This is amazing. Uh, we are only, um, I don't know what that is in dollars, we are 50 pounds away from hitting our goal. Um, which was 385 pounds which is about uh 500 we wanted to do something reasonable we are like 65 bucks away from um from hitting our target uh we've got uh two more sessions after this we've got time but um it would be amazing if we could uh to get that and like fill that green bar I'm sure there are some completionists out there who, like me, would really like to see that for, for a number of reasons. Just like, look, it's so close. Then there will be yeah. green all the way along to my avatar's hair. It will be great. <laughs> um, all, all right. right so, right. all right. Go ahead. Okay. Setting this scene. Hmm. I don't think this is at the base. I think this is maybe out during a mission. But, you know, you got to sleep sometime. Oh, I, I like this. I feel like the, um, you, there's, um, a hammock, like, tucked in a compartment that Vrasti can, like, string up inside, 
um, Radiance Cockpit. Um, <laughs> this is so funny to me for so many reasons. Continue. Okay, okay. Um, and um, no, Radiant is, um, I'm imagining like a real big tree for some reason. I couldn't tell you why. Um, and it's like the tree boughs are protect and it's like maybe it's a, a place to hide so they're not an immediate site so you've got like um this is obviously a very large very strong tree uh because it cursed me how much a mech weighs um but ready nine is like sort of sat and there's um shifted so like limbs are curled around the tree limbs so um like if there's any high winds or anything like that or you know terrifying flights of angel monsters alien things or maybe literal angels, who knows, uh, is there. And then within side the cockpit, there is veracity uh, in their hammock. Um, just chilling. <laughs> just chilling. I'm just chilling. Oh. Hmm. That's fine. Tell me what happens and I'll tell you what I do. Because I think I know what's going to happen here. Okay, okay, okay. Um, so they they're dreaming. Uh, so I say, what does this dream look like? Because I don't want to necessarily prescribe Veracity's dream. Oh, it's Veracity's dream. Yes. Oh, that doesn't I, exactly that doesn't exactly change what I was thinking, but it kind of makes things a little bit more dramatic. So, even better, love it. Um, I'm going to do this again because I think it's hilarious. Um, veracity is dreaming of the ocean. You are so in your bullshit, and I respect every one of your choices. Listen. Listen! I'm listening. <laughs> okay, now listen! Um, um, so, I think they're just laying in the sand. Mm. All right. This is good, because we had something in Stupa a little bit like that, too. Mm -hmm. That's cool. And I think it's a a voice, like on the rushing of the tide, like the and I think a whisper starts coming in with the sound of the tide. And it, it, the whisper gets louder and it and it becomes actual words. I'm trying to think what the enemy might want to actually say to Veracity. Oh, that's upsetting and good. The voice is, um, the, you know, legendary enemy. Who knows what they can do? I can't remember if we said unknowable. What was that whole thing we said? Compelling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is beckoning Veracity into the water. Oh, of course. So here's what I think happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the dream, Veracity kind of hears this voice on the wind and sits up. And it sounds familiar to them mm -hmm. in a way that they don't quite remember. Hmm. It sounds like someone saying their name. Hmm. And they take a couple of, they, they, they kind of like stand up and they're kind of like looking around and they do head towards the water. Hmm. And their toes brush the edge of the wet sand mm -hmm. and the waves are coming up with the tide 
and the memorial wall slams down. Oh. Shit. Which is their subconscious mind. Yeah. Um... Okay, let me be clear. Is the memorial wall them trying to stop the dream and using their control where they've practiced, or are they sh shutting Radiant Nine out? Both. Okay. Um. It's a... It's their subconscious mind trying to stop the dream and also trying to prevent... Um, the host from getting to Radiant. All right, all right, all right, all right. Oh, it's good. It's real good. Okay. Yeah. So, so it's so it is both here. Mm -hmm. Um, it's a it's a fail safe measure that has happened. Yeah. That has that has been triggered. That you know, Brassity doesn't. Brassity is a person. Brassity doesn't have this, but the the bloom kind of did it. Okay. The bloom um, kind of went fuck no boom. That's so good. <laughs> that's so good. Um, I think, um, like, I assume that, um, I think, like, Radio Now was, like, in idle mode. Mm -hmm. Um, like, sensors on just to take in the outside world, risk of threats, yada, yada, yada. And in their sleep, Veracity slamming the wall down is, like, the equivalent of, like, a door slamming in your house. Yes. Like, because obviously they maybe weren't it's just like the gentle flow of information like and maybe you could hear like the noise from downstairs and somebody shuts the door it yeah. doesn't hurt in the way that being like super conscious but it's like immediately snaps them to notice and um hmm they can't wake them up through the link because the memorial wall is up yep what they can do <laughs> is uh unloop themselves unloop their limbs and they literally oh god that's bad are they panicking how much are they panicking in this moment uh very much so are you are you kidding me i'm, I'm sure that they're panicking they were all right. asleep okay all they of a the connection was cut off they retract their cockpit as much as possible around um where veracity is asleep in the hammock mm. And jump down out of the tree. Bam. So, so the yeah, like literally like trying to sh like just wanted to make sure that <laughs> that they weren't going to go flying out of their hammock and brain themselves on the inside of the cockpit. Oh my god! It's more like um if you've ever been in a bunk bed or um like I'm imagining like uh, you know those um module hotels in in like Tokyo like it's yeah. spa it, the space is now that small maybe even um because it's not in piloting mode um right. um and it's just like getting jostled around in something that size rather than having the space to fly across like a chamber and build up momentum right 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 yeah and um starts blasting the external speakers <laughs> uh, and it's some it's like the it's like a really fun upbeat song because I like that kind of vibe. It's like something. Oh God, is it "Wake Me Up Before You Go Go"? Like something like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. Um, Veracity or, or it's nine in the afternoon by Panic it's at the Disco. It's nine in the afternoon. Oh, it's Come nine on. in the afternoon. I Please. love that song. Yes. Hi. 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 It's it's us. It's nine in the afternoon. Bradley <laughs> rolls out of the hammock, hits the ground, wakes up, like yelps. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. and they're like, I put another tally mark in desync, because um, mm -hmm. rip us. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they're like doing that thing where they're like half asleep, and they're like, What the fuck? What the fuck, Radiant? Um, the you get the vision still up. Mm. How long does it take for Asti to realize they put the wall up? A good few minutes. So you've just got nine in the afternoon blasting on lube. Yeah, that's real good. I There's think like, the, it's um... like two rounds of the song, and mm -hmm. then Veracity's eyes just go huge, and the wall 
kind of like gets it doesn't even like fall down they rip it away and they go we need to go oh visual 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 um both of them are hit by this um it's almost like the remnants of the dream and both of them get this visual of like a dam bursting and the ocean floods through both of their minds and it's like um like a bell being rung like the remnants of a voice with this rush of water like just echoing through yeah mm. love to game love to game um and veracity goes we need to go we need to go we need to go right now yeah um uh, Radiant doesn't even like question. Just like the uh, cockpit, like expands and like the the bits, the controls like fold out of the walls, ready for um, uh, veracity to hook in. Because even though Radiant can d move himself now, they don't need to be piloted like that or to pilot like that. They prefer to, and it's sort of like being fully connected with yeah veracity in that moment. And I imagine also being actually con being actually connected and rigged up like that is a measure of safety for them. Mm -hmm. Oh um, yeah, when when Radiant is like in running mode, yeah, or even yeah. in flight mode. Um, sweet. Uh, I need to quickly bio break um, okay. and get some more water. Uh, do you want to run down the rest of the schedule for the stream? Yeah, um, I can do the yeah. schedule. Um, sweet, sweet. I am. Be right back. I am gonna. Yep. Okay. Um. Hey. Hey, gang. It's me. It's it's me, your boy. It's seven o'clock in the morning. I'm. Sun is rising. The tank is clean. <laughs> uh. Sorry, y'all. I'm loopy. Um. Uh. Okay. So rest of the stream. Um. We've got an hour left in this one. Uh. And then we be. Uh. Uh, nudging Brian in order to make the trade over with Dora um, at eight o'clock, um, or roughly eight o'clock Eastern Standard, which would be one p.m. Uh, for those of you who are not in the United States, uh, who are in the United Kingdom mostly. Um, Jade and Anya and Dora will play uh, for the Queen, uh, followed by Ride or Die, um, which is. Ride or Die, hilariously, I was writing the schedule for this, and I went, huh, Ride or Die is a hack of a game by Alex Roberts, and For the Queen is a game by Alex Roberts. So it's kind of the Alex Roberts Power Hour. Um, or Power Three Hours? I don't know. Um, and then at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, uh, Zachary will rise and join us and close us out with a session of Spirit of 77, but wrestling um get to hold on i gotta scroll up and find this overlay so that i can get it uh oh no it's not here where did this go do you remember what the what uh he's calling the um fuck me i forgot what wrestling terms are is it a, a smackdown a showdown a no, rumble the knoxville tennessee uh one night only uh, uh, oh my god League of uh, Jesus Christ it, in the preview on Discord it's a wait um, the League of Appalachian Wrestle Wrestling presents the Marble City Slam um, so uh, close out this, this happy stream with some uh, some wrestling mm -hmm. uh, which will be very very good that's good. Um, for those of you that maybe aren't regular listeners and just saw a cool retweet from one of the awesome people watching or one of our guests or one of the game writers, um, if you like the way we play game, you can, um, on Mondays every week, um, Follow the Leader releases new episodes. That's at FTLcast on Twitter. And you can find us on all your podcatching devices. Uh, you should also check out our awesome friends and cohorts at uh, Room Where Pod. They uh, also release happen. on Mondays. They also release on Mondays. Um, and you can check out our um, you can check out our uh, kind of child podcast. Um, mm -hmm. I think me that's and, fair. 
me and Dora and a few of the Roomware folks uh, play an Animorphs uh, hack, uh, Animorphs Forged in the Dark game called Dumb Kids Playing Hero that uh, our good friend Danielle over at Roomware wrote. Um, and we have an ongoing campaign that releases on Fridays, um, which is pretty neat. Um, and that one doesn't have an official Twitter because Brian just does all the promo on the Roomware pod Twitter. Um, but you can uh, keep up with that with the hashtag, hashtag DKP, no, not key, DKPH. <laughs> All right. Um, oh, um, I'm going to quickly get, if you don't have it to hand, we should drop the link for Random Access Histories into the chat. Yes, you should buy this game, which Ben Ben Roswell, uh, a a good friend, um, actually wrote with Dora in mind. <laughs> this game was created for Dora specifically, and it's very very good. Um, yeah, we uh, played it on a live stream, which is why I have one of the earlier versions of it. <laughs> yeah, we've actually um, played this game. Dora has played this game on live stream twice now. Mm -hmm. because they played it with with you and they played it with Danielle once, mm -hmm. um, which was one of our first crossover things. Mm -hmm. One of them. Um, one of the early days of our uh, cohorts and now we have a baby podcast. I feel like that's what it was. <laughs> okay, just go uh, on the link. Uh, do we have we do have mod powers that's nice mm, yes um, all right all right all right i didn't know if brian gave us mod powers or if mm. he only gave dora mod powers okay cool um you have the power <clears throat> it's my scene right no it's mine you uh said it was the follow on Oh wait, or did, no, I, it is your scene. It is your you, scene. I lied. You, you set the dream scene. I did. I did do that thing. Um, no regrets. Why do I feel like we're missing a card? Which one? On the Have board. Have you at the whole deck? No. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then it's back to you to do a scene, because I did the first scene. I think. No, I did the first scene. I think we're missing a card. Huh. Hmm. No. All right. 10, 21. 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28. No, we're correct. We got the right number of stuff. Because it was like 13 inch. 13 each. Effectively, we made... And yeah, that's correct. Because we've had two desyncs. And then the number of cards, we're correct. We're correct. Okay. I'm going to take your word for it. We're fine. It's fine. If we run out of cards, we just reshuffle them anyway. It's good. I don't, I mean, I don't think we're going to run out of cards. I'm just saying I think that we should have an even number of cards on the board because we've gone back and forth. Mm. I know, because we've both had a, a memorial wall scene. Or if only you had one. Eh, we'll figure it out. I, I dropped the memorial wall twice. Right. Um, um, I've had lots of emotions because um, three of those cards are valid. mine. And, yeah, and then that's four total because you just did a memory or a memorial wall. So that is correct. And it's your scene. I, okay. I, I'm just, I'm just going to take your word for it. I don't think we're going to run out of cards, but I just think that we're wrong. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. The tallies are gonna add up. It's it's fine. Um, yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. So uh, my scene. Um, I think this is just veracity. Ooh, okay. What are uh, they up to? Well, what I think it is is I think that it's it's veracity going to uh, mission control. Okay. With what they learned about the um, what the host can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, kind of just, like, explaining, um, what happened 
and um like leaving out like the part where um radiant was the one that woke them up and being like and being like well how did you do it and being like well i was able to you know shake it off like i didn't like i i didn't listen to it or anything um but it was very very powerful and if they can get into dreams then we are in even more danger than we realized we were <laughs> what's coming um, through the bloom right now um fear mhm mm lots of it yeah like to the point where i think radian doesn't understand how the can't tell mm -hmm. i will be right back hold on a second no problem uh we have dropped the link for uh random access histories into the chat if anyone's just listening to us in another window which is totally rad um if you want to play this this good good game uh, it, it is the good, good shit. I'm coming, I'm coming. It's fine. I'm plugging. I'm, I'm plugging like a pro. Um, for Hello. people that have maybe needed to sleep, which is, you know, the most valid, we are going to be archiving all of the streams. Um, I'm not sure if they're going to be released on the feeds or on the Patreons. Um, we will not let this be lost into the ether of the internet. There'll be a chance to listen to the sessions <laughs> that where you needed to sleep. Thank God for uh, that, because that Beam Saber game that we played <laughs> that <laughs> left, uh, th this this morning, um, yeah, fucking slapped. Yeah, someone's gonna need to do a little bit of a editing thing on that because Brian's internet died in like the last half hour to hour of it. It was very funny. No, it was just Brian's. After... Brian's internet didn't die. He fucking oh, no. turned his computer off by mistake. Oh my God, he did. He hit. He accidentally <laughs> trying to hit something on his keyboard. Hit the reset button on the top of his computer and turned it off. That just tracks with how well Brian was rolling because he forgot to do his character shoot properly. <laughs> Brian had a fucking time with that game. It was he very survived. Funny. He did survive Stew Pot though. We all talked about how he was probably going to die, and then he didn't. So you know, bless him. Bless him. Love Brian. All right. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I know what card I want to play. I'm just thinking about this memory. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. I think I have an idea of a vibe. I think. We haven't had any cards yet. Uh, hearts are memories tied to people. Oh. So. Hmm. Hmm. Oh my god, excuse me. <coughs> <coughs> so sorry. Mm. You can tell that I feel the need to be polite because I get extra English sounding. <laughs> You get you get so posh. I have my moments. Sometimes it's just like, uh, is Jade English or autistic? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the contractions <laughs> disappear. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, hey Diva, welcome back in the chat. Awesome. Haven't seen, you, haven't seen your good your you are a little bit. Um, so you said it was fear. Fear. Hundred okay. percent. 100%. Um, mm, how long has Veracity been piloting with Radiant 9? Um, I think that it's been at least a couple of years, if not like half a decade. Like mm -hmm. it's been a minute. It's It's been a while. I don't know why I've started saying a minute, like to signify long periods of time. Mm -hmm. um, but I do. It's good. It's been a hot minute. Um, Hmm. This is at a distance. Um, a slight difference, and it's one of those another ones where your where Veracity sees themselves from the outside, because this is um Radiant Nine's perspective mm -hmm. on a matter. Mm -hmm. Um. Mm -mm -mm -mm. 
and it's um, off to the side um, and Varesti is like under a big tent treating somebody. Um, and the mech that this um, this kid was in is like smoldering, maybe even um, oh no, like Radiant Nine still got it. Uh, it's it's still like because obviously evac. That's what they do, right? And this kid is terrified, out of their mind. Uh, and Brasti is like treating them and getting them patched up. And like uh, their voice is so calm, and mm -hmm. their compassion. There's there. It's not that it's without compassion, um, but it's like. I don't know what Veracity's bedside manner is like when they're working. Um, but depends on who it depends on who it is they're working with. Yeah. Um I like the thought with that world, like they're telling this kid a story about something they did that was utterly buck wild. Um yeah. but their hands are completely steady. And it's almost like there's a disconnect, this this weird story that they're telling and their hands are just like working. And this kid is starting to calm down. Mm -hmm. Is trusting in what um, veracity is doing, and uh, radiant. You feel in the memory this kind of awe, almost like because this was before being awoken, but just sort of like this this seeing somebody being so good at their purpose but while working in a way that is outside their parameters almost like the way that a, an artificial intelligence might interpret that oh and i think um the l last bit of the memory um is from a distance um and rusty hears in their own voice you're going to be okay oh Oh, good. <laughs> All right. Putting that right into sync. Beautiful. Because I think the thing that veracity does is that it's like, they're like kind of quiet for a second while like what whoever it is, their superior officer or whatever is talking to them about whatever it is that mm -hmm. they're saying. And they just kind of take a deep breath and they go, ah, oh, like, like, How do they phrase this? Hmm. Um, we'll make it work, whatever it is we have to do. We're not going to lose this. Just like taking that quiet reassurance and just been like, okay. Mm, good shit. All right. My scene. What do I want to do now? Mm. I feel like it's got to be something like working on engaging threat though we could it could be a smaller scene um which i actually kind of want more hmm. this is just um i think this is a maintenance thing um i think it's after an evac uh because the work continues and like for us is a doctor like they're a soldier but then their role isn't to go plant they're not black ops they're not that they're that's not their role in the war so but i think they they've done a mission or they were out on a big battle and um radiant took some damage but nothing like 
earth shattering like they're not out of commission but it needs repairing before they can go out again mm -hmm. i like her uh where we've been developing this like veracity doesn't let maybe is a bit funnier about other people repairing radiant now it's just sort of like because but they, they can't come out and say my mech's ticklish and we're kind of psychically connected at all times and it feels real weird please don't uh, touch them <laughs> well it's a funny that you say that because when we were doing that first practice scene i had another thought for what the memory would look like there oh interesting um so it is so funny that you say that because what i was going to play for that memory and what i still might play for that memory is Ooh. um just sort of like one time it was that radiant came back from repair and something was just weird mm. and maybe something broke mid-fight and Oof. after that point veracity was like no one touches my mech except for me i think a lot of mech pilots are probably weird about it <laughs> just like you get to a point just like no nobody touches them nope it's like nope <laughs> That's that's you don't you don't get to fuck up my Mac. Like that's not how this works. Okay. So it is this repair scene then. Um for the memory or for the for the uh, for the scene. The scene is veracity fixing something. And I feel like maybe um it's one of their um their gliding wings. Like they can't they aren't capable of maybe um full flight, but they can maybe glide. And do a certain degree of elevation. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more like they can use boosters to get up to a point, and then they have to glide down. I really like that. That's fun. That's um, good. That's really good. I forget. There's a couple of birds that are a bit like that. Um, they're like sort of awkward little flight up, and then they swoop down, and you can use do the whole cool thing that some of the birds do, like ride the thermals and stuff like that. Hmm. Um, but maybe one of their their wings got. Um, uh, she made part of it got shattered like the pa whatever the material is got broken so it's like um imagine like a bat wing uh, maybe like one section of it got like basically obliterated so it's like getting a new one installed and all that mm -hmm. yeah that's real good yeah. all right um do I just play that as my memory? You can, yeah. I mean, I don't really have any other ideas. Yeah, sure. I think it's expand definitely on it just a like... little more. What? Do you want to expand on it a little more? Just like, so what is what what was being repaired, and, yeah. and uh, like, what is what does this look like? Is this them chewing somebody out? Like, yeah, yeah. Hand me a word picture. I think that I think that the way that it it I think that it bleeds out a fair bit um, yeah. over the course of this. I don't think that it's like a conscious thing, but I think that mm -hmm. it's very much like veracity is just working very very intentionally, and um, when it it just kind of like bubbles up that like there was this one time and it was just like it was something that should have been like a super easy fix, mm. and it ended up just snowballing into this like much bigger problem than it really needed to be and like mm -hmm. ostensibly veracity was chewing out these mm -hmm. this tech team but like from this perspective now um mm -hmm. radiant can tell that it's just it was mostly veracity being scared mm -hmm. that, um the tech team was that that a problem like that that like if they were going to fuck up simple things like that that someone was going to fuck up something bigger and wreck their mech and veracity being like i don't want another mech i want my mech and this is my mech um mm. and if something happens to them then i'm i'm done i'm out mm -hmm. mm. yeah it's good uh, well, this definitely feels like sync. So <laughs> we're doing so much sync; it's great. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have to like throw some drama in. Um, well, we have uh like twenty minutes to throw some drama in. So yeah, 
Hey, oh, Dora's here in the chat. Uh, Dora, message us in the Discord server with some uh, with an angsty sing prompt. You're good at this. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but yeah, I think the, um, as this work is going on, um, the feelings, the bloom that sort of shifts, and it was always like this feeling of safety. Um, because then it's uh, like they're trying to stay still. Uh, I'm thinking about what it's like being tattooed right now, actually. Um, oh, God, you're I think, so valid. You're so mm, fucking valid. Like, if, like, something's being welded on or welded in place, like that hot, scratchy feel is like their wing is sort of extended and this new panel is being put in. Mm -hmm. mm. Um, oh, um, they don't send the full memory back. But um, um, no, I just that. But um, that's happening. I think you get um, sort of thoughts of like little visuals, of memories of um, radiant seeing veracity work on people, mm -hmm. and um, just this feeling of I wish I could do the same for you. Uh -huh. um, the fuck? and then you get the feeling of like the cockpit closing and um you get i think you get hit with the the readouts from all of um the sensors from that night where um they had to jump out the tree and run mm. and then you get like the visual of uh, like one of somebody holding somebody like putting their body between um and you get the feeling of i will stop you getting hurt first well they already did once and they'll keep the doing thing. it yeah they're gonna keep doing it fuck off jade Love you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh god. Um just ruining me. Um All right. Um it's your scene, my memory. Oh yay. Dora's saying telling me to fuck off too. Yay. Yep. We've done it um doing the good work since we're closing in on uh the end of this yeah uh i am going to say that what happens is the next battle oh yeah which may or may not be the last one mm -hmm. we will find out okay um and it's mid battle and they are this is not the actual memorial wall that I talked about before. Okay. Because I still want you to I I, I think that what it is is it's it's not the actual memorial wall because I still want there to be the memory here. Mm -hmm. But I think it's an it's it's that sort of same thing where they're shielding to try and prevent the host from breaking in because the host has proven that they can filter into mm -hmm. veracity's dreams mm -hmm. and um but veracity mm -hmm. i'm gonna play into wild Ooh. because yep, i just yep, realized yep. i haven't yet mm -hmm. and veracity is going to pull a bullshit maneuver cool great and good yep and that's probably not going to make uh, radiant super happy mm -hmm. and you know what I don't blame them <laughs> all right okay uh, do you say anything out loud that you're about to do this because obviously the war the the protective shield is kind of up and so do you say out loud that you're about to do something uh 
yeah, I think so. I mean, I don't think I'm going to keep you totally out of the loop of the shit that I do. I just... All right. All right. Oh, what if it's like a moment where um, Rusty like, says out loud, you're not going to like this, but trust me. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it's like Copali and uh, they feel Radiant Nine like reluctantly like let go of the controls to give them full control for a second. And they won't I... resist the maneuver. Yeah, I will say that the last time uh, Vrasti pulled a bullshit maneuver like this, they ended up yeah. falling out of the sky. So um, that's probably a fun thing for Radiant to remember. Just mm -hmm. saying. Um, oh, here's a fun thing. What if... <laughs> well, it can be about to happen. What if at this point the Radiant doesn't remember that. I mean, how many people remember being born? That's a good point. Like, the trauma of waking up in that situation? Yeah. Um, but here's the thing. So the maneuver happens. Mm -hmm. I, does it go well? Does it pay off? Or do, we want, do you want off. me to have this? Okay, that works I for think, me. I think it pays off, but there's probably some like nasty consequences, which I leave up to your wonderful, wonderful mind. You're so kind. All right. I'm giving Jade a lot of power here, people. This was a higher card. Um, frankly. But, um, yeah. I think you you do this and I think the memory that comes through is when they woke up mm -hmm. that's and what I thought you were going to say and it, it's them remembering it and that's what I was you hoping you were going to say that's why I brought yeah, it up <laughs> would you please describe for the audience for our listening audience this memory because this is something you've written already and it's beautiful yeah I wrote this um so I don't know exactly what it was that Veracity did. It was an error. It was a it was not a space battle, but it wasn't also uh totally planet side. It ended with um Radiant Nine's thrusters being thrown out of commission and they ended up falling out of the sky. And um they were like command was like eject, get out of there, and Veracity was like a mad gonna do that i can fix this and radiant that was the moment when radiant became sentient because veracity was in danger and what they did was they wrapped their arms around their own chest to uh cushion the fall a little bit more when they hit the ground did it work how does physics work i don't really know we aren't uh, scientists. We aren't scientists. Um, they both lose consciousness. Um, and... Oh. Jade, are you going to pull some bullshit on me? Mm, maybe. Who knows? I might be doing the little cat smile face right now. <laughs> Who can say? <laughs> because if you're going to pull some bullshit on me, I want you to do before I explain what happened Sorry, can you say that again? You bubbled out slightly. Um, yeah. I... Um, if you're gonna pull bullshit, I want you to, I want you to explain exactly what it is that happens before I say what happens in the memory. I may do the thing that you have that we have not done yet. That you said was a very important part about Radiant Nine. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's right, what I'm gonna, gonna do that. after the memory ends. Yes. Oh. 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 Do you need to explain more about what happened or can I take this? Um, I mean, I, I, it, it is just to say that the way that the way that Veracity and Radiant got back to base was that Radiant walked them there. And Veracity was conscious, so they have the the veneer that, you know, Veracity mm -hmm. piloted them. But they both know that it was Radiant that did it. Anyway, mm -hmm. now that that's been said, now you can say your thing. So, 
um, that happens, the maneuver is going on and um, Veracity gets hit with this memory of the engines cutting out and then plummeting and the feel of arms wrapping around and then the slam of impact and everything going dark and in the memory and in the now they just hear veracity yep that's exactly what i thought you were gonna do that's exactly what i was hoping you were gonna do <laughs> yes thank you for that you're so welcome the important thing to know here is that radiant nine can only say one word with their own voice and it's veracity's name <laughs> So don't blame Jade for this, because this one's all me. <laughs> just Diva and Dora just shouting in the chat. <laughs> and rightly so. And Welcome. rightly so. Welcome back to me and Jade. <laughs> On our bullshit. I'm high-fiving you from the other side of the ocean, and I just ripped my headphones again. <laughs> a friend! A friend! <laughs> And what better? Who needs caffeine when you have your friends doing this to you, Dora? I mean, <laughs> um, we love you, Dora. We love you so much. Here's an interesting question, though. What what is this like for Veracity now in this moment? Like the maneuver's been pulled off, and they just get hit with that moment, that memory again. I mean, is this a desync moment? Um. I don't know because Ooh. I think the thing is is that veracity remembers this very clearly mm -hmm. how could you not I mean like traumatic brain injuries and all of that. but yeah. veracity has a very clear memories of the time just before and just after um radiant woke up and like kind of like ha like has gone over this over and over and over in their head and to like kind of go has like been thinking for a while like when did this happen and realized it had to have been there it couldn't mm -hmm. have been earlier than that and it couldn't have been later than that like yeah. it wouldn't have been earlier because i would have known so it had to have been right then so they have very very clean clear memories of this and i mean awesome. i think that they figured that radiant didn't but mm -hmm. i think that they can tell that this is not radiant reminding them this is radiant remembering mm-hmm um, I got a thing, mm. a possible thing, if you want it. What if in that moment of awareness, like it's memory and it's like that rush of emotion that comes with it mm -hmm. and it's enough? I think here's some, this is me being on my bullshit. Hell yeah, let's go. It's a moment of sync. But because the two of them are in sync in that moment, the shield drops. Oh. And our next scene. Well, we got time. It's fine. Let's do it. We got one I, think, more. I think one more. I think one, one more. more scene and then we'll do our close out. So. Which is good because yeah. that'll be that'll be a few full rounds. All right. I want to be really clear for the people who did just wake up. We did say at the top that we were not going to go with a super grim dark tone no. for this game. Mm -hmm. And I trust Jade a lot to, you know, keep things to like to like be cool. Yeah. I mean, Jaden, it would like we wouldn't do all of this play play stuff together if we didn't like trust each other. You know. Yeah. This is where I'm hoping that you've got a, a high card in um, your hand, really. Um, I'm hoping. Because I think this next scene, I think it's that beach and it's like a dream state moment. Of course. And it's that beckoning voice from the ocean. But rather than it being like that calm of before, um, it's like 
a roiling ocean and there are black clouds rolling in. You can see lightning striking the water out in the distance. And it's this beckoning voice, but it's not like a siren's call. It's like it's like a voice digging into your brain, mm -hmm. calling you forward, and it hurts. And Veracity is stood on this beach, and just behind them, so they can't see, but um, I do like that Dora's incentive right there, <laughs> but it's all good. Um, I wish I could. I wish I could say something pithy here, but unfortunately, it would fly. <laughs> However, mm. yeah, um, and you can, and Rusty can feel Radiant Nine just like stood behind them, mm -hmm. and like the two of oh wait no, it's a hand in theirs. Yep. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But they can't turn away from the water. They're like eyes are locked forward because I don't want to ruin what Radiant Nine might look like as like maybe a person because that's a fun thing for another day. Mm -hmm. If it's something you wanted, but that's there and it's this voice to, to, to come back. We crawled out of the water once, go back, go back, go back, go back to where you came from. It is not your time anymore. We are taking what is ours. You ruined it. We take it. It's ours. And this voice is telling you to get in, <laughs> get in the fucking sea. Get in the fucking sea. Get in the fucking sea. And I think before you even realize it, like you're at the water's edge and it's cold. Like Atlantic in like January cold. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's that's where we're at. All right. Fuck off, Dora. I don't even understand that reference, but fuck off. I think so. you, everyone knows intrinsically that that's a evangelical, um, evangelical cats reference um, without having seen the show. Yeah, but still. Still. So I do not have an ace up my sleeve, but I do have a queen of diamonds. Beautiful. And Veracity has this memory. What does this look like? The cold. Okay. Yup. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. The cold of the water jerks them back to a moment where they were losing consciousness in Radiant's chest. Mm -hmm. They were bleeding out, um, and they weren't sure that they were going to make it. Like really, just like that moment where you you where you go, I don't know if this is gonna fucking happen. And they mm -hmm. looked up and they realized that over the hole in their chest, Radiant had put one of their own hands. Mm. Like they were holding the veracity in. And mm. the thought of that fills them with, filled, filled them at the time, like kind of like, it wasn't necessarily like it filled them with warmth exactly, but it did kind of soothe them because they knew that Radiant had them and mm -hmm. would have them. And there's the, the, the water is cold and, but Radiant is holding their hand. And Veracity closes their eyes and says, oh shit, what is it that they said? Hmm. Hmm. 
I am already exactly where I need to be. Why don't you go back to the sea? Hmm. So good. And I think there is this, um, like, you feel the hand squeeze a little tighter around yours and you feel this surge of pride and love and It's like the sand shifts up underneath you a little and it lifts you up out of the water. And it's not, and I don't think this is necessarily the end of the dream just yet, but it's that cold isn't there. It's, it's lingering on the edge of your senses, but you are elevated and you are as safe as you can be. And hmm, you feel that presence again and the shield starts to spread up around the two of you that this presence of um radiant oh they live up to their name and i feel like it's uh like sunshine spreads around the two of you mm. and it's warm and you and it just infuses you down to your core Oh, very fucking good. And yeah, I think that's the dream. The voice, oh, and the voice stutters for just a breath. <laughs> All right. Fuck this shit, we're out. Yeah, fuck this shit, I'm out. Okay, end the game. <laughs> <laughs> All oh right. my god. Ending the game. Draw play to a close whenever you both agree that you have reached an end. Um, next, count up the total value of the cards in each pile with suit cards equaling 11 and aces equaling 12. Add 8 to desync for every wall one of you put up during play. So that is 11 plus 16 in desync. So 27. Um, just looking at the fact that we have three face cards. Yeah, that's, yep, that's 33. So, clear win for desync on that one. Eight, or um, for sync. Jade, mm. you Sorry, said what? desync. I meant sync, or oh, Discord made me sound like a fool. <laughs> the fool. Okay. Um, all right, all right, all right. Um... So mm -hmm. use these totals to figure out the general shape of post game for your co-pilot. There's no simple cut and way dry, dry way to do this. A high number in the sync pile might mean that you have fused and become one person, or it might mean you have become the best pilot pair in history. I'm not going to read the desync part because we don't need to worry about that. Um, nope. Yep. Uh, once we've decided what the general shape of post game life is for the co-pilots, we create an epilogue of images from this life. Take turns flipping over cards and using their suit and value to shape post game moments. But rather than role playing them as you would memories in the main game, focus on making brief tableaus that capture and feel the tone of your future. Go until each of you have drawn three cards. So I assume well, I... this can be from anywhere in the memory bank? I guess so. Sure. That's fun. So what does this look like? What does these two being super synced? Super synced. Um, hmm. I don't think in terms of like what changes out from an outsider perspective I don't think it's very much mm -hmm. but I do think it gets easier for them to communicate when they've got mm -hmm. the walls up yeah I don't think by any stretch of imagination that this war is mm-hmm 
um i just it i just it feels it's not it's not done yet but no the war is they not are done. very very good at what they do hmm. Hmm. and the tides start to turn in our favor a little bit i think hmm. i like it Hmm. okay let's um flip some cards let's flip some cards Calvin um, bowl this for a little now I am Let's... so sleepy <laughs> oh friend well if we just we can just do a couple each yeah I'm just looking at the suit do you want to start um sure I'm gonna huh, I'm gonna bust out the king of spades as I have it <laughs> um you know might as well <laughs> might as well um what this is is this is something that Radiant Nine does with veracity. They go wake up other mechs. Fuck yes. Cause That's this is the what shit I like to hear. Yeah. yeah. Um and it's about making other people to to bring them up to veracity and radiance level like this is how you resist the compel one person alone can't but two together can this is that good pacific rim bullshit bullshit um, bullshit bullshit this is people working in harmony cuz fuck hosts and their fucking yep. creepy coral bullshit yep this is helping other people wake up yeah you know, that's the king of spades um let's see I've got the King of Hearts. Mm -hmm. I'm not 100% sure what this looks like. But I think it's very, very connected to this. Mm -hmm. Where it's like one of the one of the um, mechs that they woke up comes to them at some point. And so it's one of the parents, mm. maybe. Because I don't, I think that most of the mechs are in a similar boat to Radiant 9 where they can't all speak. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's very much a like a like God, I'm so done with <laughs> <laughs> oh. um they're like you changed things for us. Hmm. Um because I think the thing about the mechs is that like you can sync fine with them, mm. certainly, but like it's so much stronger if you, if once the mechs have woken up, it's like mm. just, it's it's so different. Um, yeah. And the kind of connection that that establishes is just, it's 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 just life changing. It really is. Yeah. All right. Um, I'm gonna drop this one here. The Jack of Clubs memories tied to places or objects. This is maybe even the last part of time in the war. And this is <laughs> radiant and veracity on a real beach. Yes. Okay, they're not done quite yet. No, it's okay. God, I'm tired on you. Yeah, me too. Um, how late were you up? I played in I played in the session before this. Okay, and gotcha. Then also, I had to make sure it got off the ground. So. Gotcha. Oh, 
Gail oh. said, Brian, we need you in live. Hey, yo, what's up? Just checking so we can still have sound for the stream before we close oh, out. Oh, shit. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. You're good. You're good. You're asleep. good. It's okay. No worries. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is, this is a beach and the water is warm. And the war isn't done yet. But huh, the tide is almost completely out. Mm, yeah, and that's shit. that card. <laughs> Backstage peak. <laughs> mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, let's see. I want this to be my last one. Um, oh, yeah. You played clubs. I did. Um, Got a diamond? Yeah. I don't have a super high one because I played the queen of diamonds already. So mm -hmm. it's just the nine of diamonds, but I think that's that's good here. Um, because I do think that the thing is, is that it's not that... There's not a definable word for how veracity feels about Radiant Nine. Mm -hmm. But... The best. I need something stronger than the word that's popped into my head because I'm too tired to fuck. Um, so valid. I'm gonna sleep so good tonight, though, y'all. Holy mm. shit. Um. The best word to describe. Um. Actually. I'm gonna just click through some stuff real quick. Oh, it might be this. Oh. Um. Nope, it's this one. Indispensable. Ooh, good. That's the word. That's the best word that Veracity can think for describing how it is that uh, radiant means to them. Well, um, alrighty. Because other words are just too small. Oh, good. All right, then. Um, that has been Kales and I playing Random Access Histories. You should go check out this very good game by Ben Roswell. It is cool as hell. Um, it's a really good fucking game, y'all. Oh, uh, it is five minutes until our next session. Uh, it's going to be myself, Anya, and Dora playing for the Queen and Ride or Die, which is a hack of Starcross by our own Danielle. Uh, you should stay tuned for that, or go tell your friends about that, or uh, yeah, stick around. Um, we'll go over donation incentives and all that uh, on the next session. Um, I've been Jade. You can find me at Jade Oxford Rose on the Twitters. Um, I have been Kales. Um, this was really fucking good. Um, you can find me at Citadel of Swords on Twitter. Now, be a functional human being. Um, I don't mind you going to find me now. All right, all right, all right. Um, we're we're gonna bounce, uh, and we'll uh, be right back in five minutes with the next game, session seven. Uh, yep. Thank you for tuning in, everybody. It's been grand. Peace out, y'all. Bye. I'll talk to y'all on the flip side. <laughs>